Hey everyone, so today we're going to be looking at Saints versus City. Um, you see, very appropriate that considering the 1 0 win that Saints got, very good win for them. But I represent all my Saints fans out there. I uh, had some kit going around, so I figured I'll put it on. I'm definitely not a Saints fan, I am a Chelsea fan still, uh, but I had this kit and so I figured I'd represent them and wear it today. So Saints set uh, out like they usually do with a 4 4 2 formation. Uh, they have Eaton Adams up front with Walt Prowse, captain today, uh, and Romeo. Uh, and then City set out as a usual sort of formation 4 1 2 3 or 4 4 3, however you want to say it. Um, but they had a couple of changes. They had Cancello uh, playing instead of where Carl Walker would usually play. And they had two Silvers up here, Bernardo and Zach Silva. And then a couple of usual front three with Jesus, Sterling, and Morris uh, playing. So today I'm going to just make a little bit different so it doesn't drag on a lot. I'm going to look at the build up play of both teams. Uh, most teams play a very similar build up uh, when they try to play out for centre backs. Um, so, and we've looked at City a few times, so I don't think it's necessary to do that. So today I'm just going to look at what Saints did to achieve their victory and areas where they could have improved and almost conceded from. Uh, that way it should be a short video and a lot more concise and to the point and it will say what you know Saints did to manage to get that victory. So the first thing we're going to look at is what Southampton were doing for pretty much 80% of the game, which was uh, trying to defend City attacks. In the first half, uh, the way City set up is they have the two centre backs uh, as the sort of outlet in case they had to come out from out wide and they had the outlet to switch, uh, switch the play. And then allow the two uh, full backs to sort of tuck in into more of a central midfield area and try and work it. Because City really likes to try and work through the middle and so that the five those extra options in there. And then uh, their wingers would stay out wide, Morris and Sterling would stay out wide and try and find the options for the width. And so you've got and trying to have a go at the full backs from Southampton. Um, and then also Silver, the two Silvers would play in this sort of general area here. Uh, this is from zone 14. Uh, I've, I've spoken about it in a previous video of mine. Um, this is sort of a quite a dangerous area and an area the city likes to play. Normally De Bruyne is playing in that area quite a lot. Um, but obviously he was the start in this game. And in this area, it's quite, the reason why it's really hard for a team to try and deal with and why it's quite a common place for City to try and receive that ball is because it's in between the midfield and the defence and it makes the uh, centre-backs from City have to try and make a decision where they're going to step out and try and get that ball. And also, it just, it's at an area where a City like to try and runs in and around the back. So if the ball comes out wide to Sterling, then that ball can then come wide in here. And that's why playing in this area is really dangerous. Especially when you have the likes of Bernardo Silva, who was trying to play in that area. So he has the pace and he can try and outpace Stevens, who did a very good job in this game at stopping a lot of attacks. But you can try and outpace him and try and create those chances in there. And that's why City likes to play in those areas. Now, what uh, Samson did very well as well is they, they stayed defensive, they stayed solid, and they, they never let up and never really got out of their position. And they really tried to force City out wide into these areas here. Because if City were playing in those areas, then their main chance of trying to create a goal scoring opportunity was to cross it, which is exactly what uh, Stanton wanted. City don't have aerial dominance with Dan Silva, Banana Silva, and Jesus. They're not going to really win headers that often, even though Doug Silva did manage to you know, win a few uh, while when the crosses came in. However, this is what Samson wanted to do. And so they tuck everyone in, eat, they, they allow that wide play, they tuck, tuck in their two wingers and really try and condense that space in the middle so that City couldn't play through them and create a chance for the City really liked to create. And this made it really, really hard for City. Especially with the commitment from the front two here, with Ings and, Ings and Adams did an amazing job at closing down centre backs if there was a poor touch or if they saw an opportunity. And they were doing a really good job as well at stopping Cancelo and um, Sinchenko getting on that ball and really trying to play through the middle. They were working non stop throughout the entire game. It was amazing to see them uh, playing, especially down the Ings. And I think I think the way Ings was playing really made Adams have to try and step up his ability, step up his work rate, and it just meant they were working really well together to just create chances for themselves and try and catch City out of possession. And they did a very, very good job. So this is how Stanton set up defensively for a lot of the game. Um, and it was just 
No, especially after City scored, uh, Southampton scored their goal, this is how you know when City were trying to break through. This is how Southampton was set. They really just want to maintain that lead and just keep them solid defensively. And uh, the other thing as well, uh, this isn't just when they were defending. Southampton did a really good job of keeping the distance between the defence and the midfield as tight as possible. Because this is where City thrive, is in between these areas here, is in between the midfield and the defence. It's because they can see the ball and maybe turn and go out the uh, Southampton defence, or they can play out from there. And that's why Southampton did a very good job of keeping this distance between the centre backs and the centre mids and the full backs and the wingers really close. So it's really hard for City to play from the middle and really emphasise when City came wide. So here we have a representation of what Southampton were doing when they managed to push City further back up to the pitch and into their own half. So what Southampton were doing as well, with the commitment from their team and the awareness that they had, one thing that I really, really enjoyed watching was the centre mids, Ward Prowse and Romero. What they didn't do was sit back and allow the players like Bernardo, so they didn't sit in behind uh, the two silvers. They were willing to try and sit in front and cut out passing lanes, uh, passing lines. So if the ball came out of here and the option was to try and play into silver here, then more crowds would just take a few steps here. They always would check their shoulders, both of them would always check their shoulders to make sure that they cut out that passing line and made it as hard as possible for City to play out. And it worked really, really well for them, especially with the way that Ings and Adams were playing together. So if that ball came out here, let's say, Ings would then close down whilst trying to cut out the pass either into Fernandinho or into the other centre back, whether it be the port of the uh, other centre back, then he would be cutting out that pass. So the line of sight meant that Fernandinho would be able to match through and see the ball. And then if that option was there, then that, that would be where Adam could come in and he could then come in here and try and cut out that pass there, forcing City to come out wide. Which again is where the two uh, Southampton wingers would then tuck in and uh, be marking here Zinchenko or the other, uh, other side, Cancelo, uh, being marked on that side. And then if the ball's so ball played out here, then what Southampton do is they shuffle across. So we have Walker Peters who did a very good job in this game at dealing with Sterling, a very good, uh, very good player in this game. He would come out wide and mark Sterling. He wouldn't stay. Uh, he wouldn't stay in front of Sterling because then the balls would be played over the top, like the uh, St. Mitchell did. But he stayed in behind Sterling and was touched tight to him to make sure that if Sterling didn't see that ball, he didn't have an opportunity to then turn at him and have a go. Because Paul Pitts made as hard as he could for him. And the same was uh, on this side as well. So he came out wide, then he'd be on there uh, on Morris as quick as possible. So this made it really hard for City to play out at times. Southampton did do this the whole game because um, uh, City are a very adapt team and they can they can deal with situations like this um, and they manage to do they manage to play out sometimes and get up the pitch whether they whether uh, Jesus came in here to try and receive the ball and just like play out wide to Morris or Sterling then that was maybe their main outlet but Southampton did a very good job they did it in burst they didn't tie themselves out they didn't do it constantly, non-stop, they did it in burst. They saw their opportunities, whether it be a poor touch, poor pass, which is how um, Santa's first goal came about. It was, I mean, it was amazing finishing challenge, to be honest. I mean, what was it? It was from probably about here. Um, over Edison, really, really uh, good observation from him to try and play that, uh, score that goal. And it's just where they caught out Zinchenko. Zinchenko tried to receive it in the middle here, and they closed him down, and they got the ball, and they had a chance to score, and they did, and they managed to defend very really well throughout the rest of the game. And this is what Swansea did very well, they just all worked together. They did, no one was you know, not doing their job, everyone was doing their job at the same time. I think the only issues came was when Samantha maybe overcommitted at times. Uh, I often saw Bertrand on this wing, uh, a couple times he would really commit to a man here. Uh, if the ball was played back, and it just meant he had a lot of tracking back to do, which one would mean he was tired, and two also created options for Morris to try and receive that ball on that wing. Um, but even if he did do that, the Santa players were aware of this, and it wasn't just Bertrand doing this, but if, if let's say Bertrand made that run, then um, the winger would come back and cover his position. So they all worked really, really well together, and I think the only issues came was uh, from the previous slide, uh, slide where 
Um, City were playing quite well around the edge of the box and then it's in the areas around here and like I said in zone 14 uh, in both places here and they were getting in around here but that was the only real danger I found um, from for Southampton's perspective was just whether the centre back would go and press him or, or not and I think Southampton did a really good job and did themselves proud I think it was an amazing game to watch and obviously I'm they're glad that they came away with uh, one, uh, three points, a uh, 1 0 win. And I just think it was a really entertaining game to watch. I mean, it was really end to end, uh, first half. Obviously, second half, uh, City made a few changes. Um, De Bruyne coming on, who didn't actually do that well, and he, he started sitting more. But what they did in the second half, I noticed, was um, Zinchenko and Cancelo, they came further out wide. They, they, they accepted the fact that. Spanish were covering that middle area that we saw before they, but they accepted that and they were covering that middle area so they allowed Cancelo and um, Zinchenko to come wide and beat out to wide instead of Sterling and Morris. Um, that way Sterling and Morris could then you know, make these runs that they do into these areas um, in that second half, which is where some danger came and which is why I think City were able to maintain such a lot more. They weren't going through the middle. And so City were able to maintain possession, keep up the pressure, keep shooting. Obviously, I think Samantha maybe sat back and just accepted this, but I, I think City just made a mistake in the first half. If they're not allowed to play, if they're not letting them play through the middle, then accept that. And this is where Zinchenko should then come wide, and then maybe that, their more creative players, Mares and Sterling, come in the middle and make those runs and create those chances, which is what happened in the second half. And if I think if City were doing that from the first half, they might have had more chances than could have got to come out with a win. But really great for truth for Saints and a really good game to watch overall. Um, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll get another game done soon. Uh, there's a game tomorrow, I think it is Arsenal versus Leicester, which looks like an insane game to watch and could be a fun game to analyse, especially considering Arsenal are doing a lot better now. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching and goodbye.